Hey, I'm back. Now, um, I'm going to talk about a comment that Iron Sheet made, and if you want to know exactly what he wrote, then you can go to What Do I Mean by Outside the Game. I'm pretty sure that's the title of that video. It was just done today. Okay, so, first of all, I'm very excited about Iron Sheep's questions. Thank you, Iron Sheep. I appreciate it. One of the reasons why you'll see me slow down on videos is let me explain how this works again. I died, went to the other side, came back. When I came back, I ha have a direct line. I don't have amnesia like you guys have. I know who I am. I know where I came from. I've got all the information that I can get, which is everything, because I remember and can access and can merge with sort of what all those words that humans use with oneness that we all are, okay? Now, all the information on, oh shoot, all the information in the United States could not fit into one human brain and be accessible. And if it did, you would call that person who could access that data a, like, superhuman intellect person. Okay? That's just information in the United States. I have information from the all that is. Okay? It won't fit in a human brain. It, w it will not fit. So how it works is... I don't have anything in my brain. I don't think on a day to day. My 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 head is clear. Nothing no thoughts ramble through my head. The only time that there's a thought in my head is when I'm triggered for some for some reason. At which point the next thought that's in my head is how to allow that trigger identify whether the trigger is towards 5D or back down to 3D. Once I've identified that, then I try to let go of the ones that are lower and lean into the dream triggers towards 5D. Okay, the rest of the time, blank. So, that was not completely true a year and a half when I started these videos. I was doing a lot of thinking, a lot of figuring. In that process, and what I had done for eight years up until that point, and all of the things that I had done... I translated that into, well, if I did this and it made me feel better, maybe if I did a video, I could talk to somebody else about it or maybe help another starseed feel better. That's how this whole thing started. And that's all I thought I would ever do. I never thought I would go out and meet people. I never thought I would have a thousand subscribers. I never thought I'd be writing a book. None of that stuff. None of that stuff ever occurred to me. I just simply wanted to talk to somebody about what had happened, or to help star seeds feel better. Okay? All this data has never been collected. I've never done it for any other reason. Okay? So at this point, where I'm kind of pretty much living in the now, dealing with the triggers up and down, that's all I do. Now, Sandy and I will sometimes have a conversation, and or I'll have a conversation with myself or with somebody else, and it'll trigger something and I figure something out, or or um, at least to a different thing, but very seldom does that happen, and usually I figured it out very quickly. We're talking two or three seconds. And it's funny, if you're around me, and the people that have been around me will know this to be true, is when we have a conversation, and I hit on one of those points that I've never thought of before, I will say, oh, that would make a good video, write that down. Because I guarantee you, Three seconds after I finish that conversation, that conversation will be gone and I'll forget about it. Okay? So, I know that I have access to all these, all this information, but I don't access it unless I'm triggered to do so. Your questions trigger that answer. If you ask me a question, I immediately ask, I immediately get the answer. So, whatever questions you have in your now moment that will help you, I am more than happy to do a video on and respond to it. More than happy to do so. I quit doing videos because I quit getting questions. Or I got questions that were already answered in the 400 videos that I'd put up many, many times. So if you've got a unique question that's unique to you, after you've watched the 400-some videos, 
I'll be more than happy to answer it. Excited to do so. It's fun for me to do that. I enjoy doing that. Okay? Now, there's a good part of what I know that I can't translate into human speech. You, people that are in amnesia in linear time space Earth do not have the vernacular. They don't have the words. They don't have the concepts available to for me to relay a lot of what's outside this game. But I can do the best that I can do. I will do the best that I can do, and I'm a pretty good talker, and I'll do the best that I can do to answer your questions. All right? Okay, now let's go to Iron Sheep's question. Uh, does this, and the, remember, this is the video that says, what do I mean when I say outside this game? Now, hopefully, at this point, you'll pause and go watch that video if you haven't watched it already so that you understand what I'm saying. Because when I say outside this game, I mean outside this whole game. And this whole game is not Earth, it's not Aliens, it's not 5D, it's the beginning of the creation of duality. Duality is not the normal state of the all that is. This is a unique concept that was created by the creator of this idea and this concept of this game, and it was the beginning of the whole thing. This is huge by human standpoint. Uh, Earth is a teeny tiny little molecule <laughs> in, within this game. It's that big. 3D was really only Earth up until the time we hit the lowest level of 3D. Then, very quickly, other planets started to play as well. And now it, 3D is much bigger. But at the time, Earth was the first one that went to 3D. 4D... There was a time when there was a first planet that hit 4D. Now 4D is huge. It is huge. Eventually, 3D will be just as big as 4D. It will be multidimensional. It will be multi-universal. Universal, many galaxies, many planets, many beings of all sorts. But for now, that's... that, And I just say that so you understand the concept. And 3D and 4D, as you know them are a tiny, tiny part of the creation of duality. Okay? So, now we're talking about going outside of the whole game of duality. Now, the second, really, anybody can go into oneness at any time. The only reason you don't is because you forget. When you're outside this game, in, right now you're in amnesia. When you get in, within this game in any part that you don't have amnesia, you can go into oneness anytime you want and back into the game and back into oneness, back into the game. Uh, people that are highly enlightened and are out of amnesia can go into oneness at any time while in human body. I do it all the time. On a regular basis. I'm, I can do it now as I'm talking to you. It's really no big deal. And let me explain this by first and ask, letting you know Iron Sheep's question. Question is, does this mean that outside the game and in oneness, quote, there is not just one person? It's not just one person. Yes. <laughs> and no. <laughs> okay, oneness is oneness. We're all one. Okay, now, the best way for me to explain this so that you can understand and I've used this analogy before, but don't worry, Iron Sheep. I'm glad you brought it up again so I can go over it again. Okay, I want each and every one of you to stop for a minute, because if you're listening to me, you're probably not a child. That means you're some sort of adult. So at this point, you can go back and close your eyes and remember some part of your childhood. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to this analogy. You probably remember your teen years. You probably remember young adult, middle adult, adult older adult, and uh, oldest adult. I don't know what people call anybody anymore. I can't keep up with the right vernacular. But now, with that in mind, just keep that in your mind for a minute. Now, I'm going to use this analogy that I've used before. If I said to you, here's a million dollars. This is what would happen. A part of you who was a child, the child part of you, who is a, a distinct, separate part of you, distinct, separate part of you, that was created 
with certain experiences um, that happened. I don't know, I just got some kind of weird thing on my screen here. Okay. That, okay, back to the child thing. This separate part of you that's a child, and you know that separate part of you. You know how it was created, why, how you react to things. The child part of you would want to play with the money. Go buy toys or or go get season tickets to whatever ball team you like or go buy a snowmobile or, you know, go on a lot of vacations, Disneyland or whatever. That's a child part of you. Okay, and this the part of you that I gave the money to who's looking at me and talking to me would know that the child was in the background going, yay, money, 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 let's go play, let's go play. You would know that. Now, it wouldn't show in your face, but we know that it would be doing that. Now, the teenage part of you might be doing all different kinds of things because teenagers are very different, but one may b buy a Lamborghini. One might, uh, oh, I don't know. One might go get expensive shoes, you know, nice jewelry, watch, whatever. But a more sophisticated form of toys, so to speak. But that would be a very different part of you. The teenage part of you that was created very separately from who you are now, but definitely has its role in who you have become. Again, the son part of you or daughter part of you that is very very separate from the rest of you was developed with your inner relationship with your parents would say i need to take care of my parents or screw my parents i'm not going to give them a darn thing depending upon your relationship with them the um worker part of you the the uh, provider part of you that again is very very different would say something like well I want to invest it in buying my own business or I want to invest it in stocks and bonds or 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 the part of you who is a, a family member sister brother nephew niece that would look out and want to take care of those other people around you but okay let's stop there that's enough the point here is that there's very much parts of you that are very separate from each other in other words you would not go to work and be your child self it would be inappropriate by the same token you wouldn't go to a family reunion and be your work self and when people do that the people that are around them are very uncomfortable so if you bring your child self to work people are very disapproving if you take your work self to family reunions your family is very upset because you're being cold and aloof so there's appropriateness in which part of you comes out to play okay all right now take that concept and now we're going to go to oneness now it's going to get lots 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 bigger so the entity that is me i am a part of oneness but i'm a part of oneness like the child part of you is a part of you, okay? This is not not a part of you, even though it's very separate. It has this very distinct history, has very specific likes and dislikes. I mean, when I was a child, I liked very different foods than I do now. Some of those foods I still like a lot, and some I don't like as much. It, whenever they're merged with the child and, and the teenager and the young adult and the middle-aged person and older person when those all merge together on a day-to-day -day life it's usually a combination of all those things that we like but we always you should healthily give credence to and have stories about when i was a kid when i went out to eat if we ever did which wasn't very often i ordered hamburger and french fries every single time every single time that's what i did as a child and I can say that. Now I go out to eat and I rarely order hamburger and french fries. Very, very seldom. Okay? Because I can make better hamburger and french fries myself at home now. Okay? So there's a reason before it. Buy it. It's not that I don't have hamburgers and french fries anymore. It's just that I make them the way I like them best at home. So I, when I do have hamburgers and french fries, it's going to be me doing it. Because I'm better at it than most people are to my taste. 
when I go out, I want what somebody else can prepare that I really like that I can't prepare yet. Okay? All right. Now go back to into oneness. What oneness is, is much bigger than you can possibly imagine. But oneness, as I said, is like you. And all the entities that are within oneness are like the child self, the teenage self, young adult, etc. Okay, or the son, the daughter, the niece, the nephew, the employee, all of those different aspects. Those are us beings that, that are part of oneness that go back into oneness. And when we go out into a game, like in this game, forget who we are, it is to have an experience that whenever we go back out of amnesia, we'll go back into oneness and merge with all that we are, and it'll be added to the whole. Now, within yourself, you know that the child self in you knows when something happens to the middle-aged part of you. Instantly. You know this. Well, that's how oneness is. Whatever's going on with any of us, anything, whether or not it's a cre creator being who is, who is being a molecule in somebody's fingernail on this game, or if it is a creator God aspect of oneness because we have we have access to all of it we are one we are like you are a human being so we are we all are gods we have access to it it is your choice to forget that to get down here to this game in order to have an experience but the second your amnesia comes back you're going to remember it all as will everything else all the rest of us in the oneness will remember and know that is why we do not do things copycat, ever, because we are all one. So the point is, you're supposed to come down here and have your own experience coming down, going up, whether or not it's fighting to conform with each other, which is an experience. You'll fail because you can't conform. We're not meant to conform. The whole point is to do it differently. But the fight to conform will be a unique experience when you come out of amnesia. And go back to the one. So the one is so big. Source is so big. That source energy. That oneness that they talk about. Is so big. That we can. Break off little parts of ourselves. And control that. So I can decide in the oneness. I can say okay I want to experience being a child again. So part of the oneness. The part of the consciousness will go over. And it will the equivalent of be a child again or it can create a new game like this game which all of us do or be a part of somebody else's game or just take a part of us to a new game or a part of us in somebody else's game we can do anything and i'll say that over and over again until y'all really get it we are gods we are all one it is bigger than you can possibly imagine. You have access to all that power at any time. It's just a matter of figuring out how to get over the amnesia, how to get past the belief systems, and back into control of who we really are to create what you want. Now, at the same time, there are bees. Now, this is star seeds. I'm talking to star seeds and long-term humans that are coming out of the game. Everyone else... You have to leave them alone. They are doing their own parts. They're playing their own games. If you get in their way and they're not coming out of the game, they're coming into the game and are intending on going lower, you are going to run into problems because it's like you fighting you because we're all one. And it's like you don't respect them. It's like, no, I'm busy trying to be... I'm going to 3D here. Don't tell me to come out. Don't tell me what I've got to do. Don't tell me that we're all one. No, we're not. I'm a separate individual. I'm strong and independent. Well, don't get in their face. It's taking a. It's very difficult to forget that we're gods and we're a part of the one. Don't interfere with them. They're working very hard to have that experience. And when they're done, they're going to add it to the whole, and you're going to appreciate it. You're going to appreciate it. Trust me, you will appreciate it. Even though you may not understand why parts of oneness and the entities that are pulled apart do this, you will appreciate the fact that they have. Because guess what? When they come back out of it and they create all this cool stuff, you get access to it without having to do the work. Well, you kind of do because we're all one. Oh, mind-boggling, isn't it? All right, so let me read what else 
he has to say. Seriously, I have never been sure what is meant by oneness. Hopefully, that will explain the oneness thing. And all too often come across people using it in a way to describe a cohesive, conformist, constrictive life condition I'd not like at all. I know you don't mean it that way, but it's a confusing thing to me. Yeah, it's anything but conformist, constrictive life condition. It's just that when you walk through life and you decide, and you do this all the time, and you're just like, as above, so below. Uh, let's say that you may see something on TV. Oh, man, the, uh, the uh, those things, commercials are really good at making this happen. Is You see a commercial over and over again, and it shows a certain um, trip. Like, uh, for instance, uh, you know, commercials where... Uh, people complain about this, where they'll have a beer commercial. It looks like every time you have a beer, it's the most fun thing ever. So you go out and you start drinking beer so that you can have those fun times, just like the commercial show. Well, that's creating another aspect. You're going, oh, well, I'm not that way now, but let me expand over into this other thing, see if I can have more experiences if I do that now, whether or not you have fun all the time with the beer or if you become an alcoholic, doesn't really matter. What matters is you've created a whole bunch of new experiences that are unique to you. You will do them different than any other creator God, any other human ever has. There will be, it may look the same to humans, but from a, uh, from a, um, energetic standpoint, they're all very, very different because, because everybody's energetic footprint so to speak starts and ends up very very different because of our experiences because they're very unique and since we are part of one we don't want to repeat ourselves and we never would so every path that we take every experience we have will be just a little bit different than another person because that's the point that's the point we want to be very very different now it is definitely an experience for uh, for humans to come down here, be in amnesia, uh, know that they're creator gods, and it, this is what we say, we don't like to be told what to do, because outside of this, as we're a part of the oneness, nobody tells us what to do, we do whatever in the hell we want, all the time, so we come down here, and we're in amnesia, people tell us what to do, and we fight that. So, this is the story of many, many very interesting experiences for humans, is that is this of wanting to be with a group of people but not be told what to do but the people say well if you're going to be with a group of people you need to conform to this and then there's another group of people say oh that's a bad group of people because they do this come conform with us and then they duke it out and have fights and whoever wins makes all the people do certain things and this is an ongoing story and it has provided <laughs> a lot of experiences for a lot of of uh, of us in human form that are part of the whole you'll see you guys will just they'll blow your minds once you die I know you're scared of it but once you die you'll you'll be amazed okay all right, would you consider doing some more talks about time? I have a really hard time, ha ha, with this one. When people say time doesn't exist, I can't see how anything moves, changes, or well, how anything can happen at all without some kind of time, some sort of thing over which to change in this creation or anywhere. The best I could come up with was to think about time as multidimensional in and of itself, and that works for understanding most of what is said, but occasionally there's no such thing part, and I just can't get past the block. It seems an intrinsically necessary component of change. I have thought of the moment... Okay, well, you're right. It is an intrinsically necessary component of change, but change is also an illusion. Oh, that didn't help, did it? I'll get back to it. I have thought of the moment I'm in as simultaneous creation and destruction of the entire universe. Yeah, there is no... But see, okay. And, and you can continue. Uh, let's see, I'll just read the rest of it. But I don't think that's quite right because there's no need to create or destroy. They could all exist, all possible universes, and I'm just drawing a line, connecting them up and experiencing time the way it works for film 
frame by frame or universe by universe. Clearly, I think about this too much. <laughs> okay. All right. As I've said before, when I died and stepped outside of time, I, re I remember it clearly. I've told you guys this. I remember it clearly. The moment it happened, and I stepped into now time. What I say is now time, which is actually no time. No time would be a better word for it. There's no time. And I, and I remember taking a deep breath and kind of looking around and going, Oh, yeah. And instantly I knew that that is the norm. No time is the norm. Linear time space is very, very unusual. It is not used in gameplay very often. People, entities do not use it very often. It's, it's just not something that's done. But when I turned around and looked at linear time space, I mean, I understood the concept, just like a, you understand the concept of no time. But I couldn't really wrap my mind around it. And I was confused. I remember thinking, well, but how did that work again? So instantly when I went into an understanding of no time, I couldn't understand linear time space. And when I'm in linear time space, I'm like going, no, how does that work again? Until I go back into no time again. So they're, they're almost mutually exclusive. So don't beat yourself up about this. Ultimately, the reason why I don't talk about time much is because it's not really relevant. Um, you are in linear time space right now. That's just the way it is. As you move to time to 5D, time will get very wobbly. And for a lot of people, it already is. It always has been. It always has been. I've said this before. You can go back to your childhood and the summer seemed to just drag on and on or the school year, whichever way you wanted to call it. And it just was the longest period of time ever. Now, at almost 59, one day, 59 years old, the summer's nothing. I'm going, it's done. You see, it's not, it's never been what you thought it was. Never has it been what you thought it was. And if you look at things on your day-to-day -day life, you'll see that. I've said that, uh, let's say you're going on vacation. To me, I'll go on a vacation and be very excited to get somewhere. And when I'm driving there, it seems to take forever to get there. Then when the vacation is over and I've got to go back to work, and I'm driving back home where I know I've got to go to work the next day, man, it's like I'm there in 15 minutes. Because it's, it's you know, I'm really anxious about getting there. So I've got resistance getting there. So the, the time just drags on further. Whereas... I just really don't want to go home, don't really care, I'm not paying attention, bam, I'm home. Those kind of moments that I just described have happened to everyone. Everyone. This isn't your imagination. Time is a creation of human beings. Animals and plants don't see time like you do at all. Not at all. You'd be shocked and shaken to see it. But especially humans have developed this need, and this is in, in linear time-space thinking, there has to be a beginning and there has to be an end. Always. There just has. You can't conceptualize it any other way. There has to be, and therefore, almost all humans go, well, I'm here. What, what steps do I have to take to improve to get to a better end? Okay? Now, if you get caught in that iron sheep, you will have yourself buried so deep in 4D, you won't get to 5D, which is fine. You know how I feel about that. 4D is very much about learning to mess with time. So it will start this gameplay of the beginning of a universe and the end of a universe and how they begin and how they end. And, and there's all kinds of time play. Time travel, time collapsing, all kinds of time play. So if you get into time much, you can get caught into the 4D game. Thus, I don't spend much time on it. I simply have tried to explain to you guys, like a movie, that all things exist at one time. All things exist. But it is a very big place in the no time, all source arena. So what happens is you come down and you get into a human body with a human brain that can't 
and then you start limiting what you can see, what you can experience, what you can translate out of the all that is. Okay, it's not like you go anywhere. You haven't gone anywhere. You, you just simply are with the all that is right now, sitting right in the middle of it. You're not going anywhere to go to 5D. You're going to vibrate differently. You're going to translate everything that's around you differently. Just like if you put on night goggles and you looked around in the nighttime, your eyes would see something completely different than they would without those goggles during the daytime. Okay? Did anything change? You're sitting right there. You don't move. You're a quadriplegic looking out your window. Nothing's changed. But you put on different goggles and you look around. You haven't changed anything at all. You've just put on different goggles. Okay. Well, when you came down here, everything is here. Every option is available. But you came in and you put on the goggles of being in a in a human skin suit. You put on the goggles of being in a certain time era. You put on goggles that um, that you've got human eyes and they can only see this range uh, of, of frequency. You put on goggles that your skin can only feel certain range of frequency of energy. All the energy is still there. It's just that you've taken, you know, ten bits of what's in the all that is and what you've done is you've said okay in this moment in this now moment through with all these goggles and all these filters that i've got on in this moment i am going to see this stuff and that moment creates your supposed reality now what happens is you've got a lot of belief systems those belief systems say okay one second from now is another second. And in that another second, there's a lot of belief systems involved in this that you've been trained to do over the years as you grow up. So your mind says, okay, in another second, the sun's going to be further down. In another second, I will have taken another step. In another second, I will move. Is any of that true? No, not really. But because you believe all of it and you've got these filters on, then you're going to collect the data and give you another now moment still frame that will make it appear that you that the sun has gone down just a little bit, that you have taken another breath, that your hair has moved in the wind, or whatever. Fill in the blanks. It's very complicated. There's lots of things going on. And every now moment using all of those belief systems and what you want to create to make it look like it's linear time is all of those things will happen. The sun will be a little bit lower. A bird will have hopped across a, a branch. Your child will have taken a breath. You will have taken a breath. You will have blinked. And because you collect this new data through all these filters, it will make it look like you are going through time and space. It's not true. It's not true at all. It's just you're taking little still moments and you're doing them so rapidly. Like I said, you're doing it a couple billion times a second, guys. A couple billion times a second. This is done with a, it takes a lot of setup to get down in the human form and to train a baby up to forget the God that they are so you're not sidetracked with everything else that you actually know. That's why you go into amnesia. That's why you live in a skin suit. is so that you cannot see everything else that is around you in the now. All the rest of source that's all around you. So that you can have this experience of being a human on this planet. Okay? You tuned out everything else. Tuned out everything else. When you're a baby, you tune out a lot more. Because you have to learn to run this skin suit. Okay, you have to learn all the rules. So you really tune out a lot more. By the same token, on the other end, you remember a lot more. And then as a child, as a child, you believe, you believe in... Um, your invisible friends that are visible to you, but the adults say they're invisible, so you have to get rid of those. But you also believe that the universe, if you're two years old, the universe is your house. That's the universe, and everybody kowtows to you. 
You control the universe. Well, that's because that's what you came from. That is what you believe. So it takes years for that two-year-old to be trained that, no, you're not in charge. This isn't your world, and you'll do as you're told. All of those years get you to the point, and all these belief systems get you to a point that as an adult, you believe that you are an individual human in time-space and that all these things happen a certain way. Science has proven it, right? <laughs> okay, well, that's 35 minutes on time, and... Uh, Hopefully, that will get you a little bit closer, but not, I don't want to give anybody so much information that they get sidetracked into 4D. Uh, it's a big place to get mired down in. Those of you who enjoy space travel and aliens, it's a great place to be, but it is a dualistic game, and it is pretty severe. There's some big players in that that make uh, Trump and Putin, Putin look like nothing. <laughs> look like nothing no big deal at all so i'm just saying all right that's it for this one i love you guys so much and now maybe you understand why i need your questions if you want me to do videos it's a lot better way of getting me to do videos if i get sidetracked building the bus i don't ask any questions so i don't get any new aha moments to do videos okay i love you guys so much oh by the way it looks like for some unknown reason YouTube has decided to uh, put ads back on my videos, which means I could make some money here. So if you would, just um, go to the other room and let the ads run. And, like, I guess it's important to like this video and subscribe. People are always saying that. So like my videos and subscribe and let the ads run. So maybe I can make some money here. <laughs> right? I love you guys so much. Huge hugs. Bye now.